Hi, I'm Dr. Scott Walker. I teach Geography and Environmental Science at Northwest Vista College. So let's start with a question. How fast can a coronavirus move? They don't have legs, they don't have wings, so how fast can they actually move? Well, before I answer that, let's talk about what environmental science has to do with viruses. Most people think of environmental science as the study of natural resources, maybe pollution, energy, ecology, and large animals, um, but how do viruses fit in? It all has to do with human interactions with animals. You see, coronaviruses are zoonotic. That's from zoonosis, pronounced zoonosis, or the English word zoo, meaning animals, plus the Greek word gnosis, meaning disease, bacteria, or viruses. Zoonotic diseases come from non-human animals and they pass to animals. About 60 to 70 percent of infectious diseases are zoonotic. Some examples are bubonic plague from rodents, uh, AIDS virus thought to be from chimpanzees, a hantavirus from rodents, bird flu from, well, birds, uh, others like um, Mapucho from rodents, Marburg from monkeys, Ebola from, we're not exactly sure yet, uh, Nipah virus, the West Nile virus, the Zika virus, MERS and SARS. There's lots of them. Now, let me stop for a minute and throw some terms out to you. I told you that zoonotic diseases are ones that pass from non-human animals to humans. Those non-human animals that carry diseases are called reservoirs, or they're called reservoir hosts, or a natural host. That is, they're a host species that carry a disease, but they don't have any symptoms of that disease. And the disease causes no harm to the host. Bats and rodents are common examples of host species. The next term, intermediate species, well that's an animal that gets a disease from another animal and then amplifies it. A civet is a good example of an intermediate species. It's an odd looking cross between a cat and a raccoon and this fox sort of mammal that lives in Africa and Asia. They're related to the mongoose and they're considered a culinary delicacy in southern China. In fact, they're used in an elaborate soup called dragon. Yeah, that's the name of the soup. They're mixed with some rat snake, or if you prefer cobra, they'll throw in some cobra or some regular old chicken. And this dragon now is quite expensive. However, civets were found to carry the SARS virus back in 2003. Another example of an intermediate species is a mosquito that carries West Nile virus. It picked up from some host bird. The mosquito, also called a vector, passes the viruses on to humans. It's not all about despised vectors, vectors like uh, rats and mosquitoes, though. The Nipah virus in Malaysia transfers from bats to pigs to humans. Now, a lot, but not all people, think eating bacon and pork chops is perfectly normal. The Hindra virus transfers from fruit bats to horses and then to humans. And I mean, who doesn't like horses, right? Well, disease passes from a non-human animal to a human animal. When it does that, it's called spillover. It's a disease transfer from a res reservoir host or intermediate species to a human. Now, what you just learned was a lesson in community ecology. Now, that's all part of the interdisciplinary study of environmental science. But wait, there's more. We have to look at the bigger picture. Spillover occurs because of human disruption of natural environments. Another part of environmental science has to do with increasing animal populations. In this case, the human animal, which is you. And when we humans, since we're a part of nature, despite how we might feel about, you know, being part of nature when we're, you know, sitting around playing video games or we're driving to work or whatever, well, we're all connected and this connectivity has a large role in disease spillover. As David Quammen, the author of the book entitled Spillover, says, we shake the viruses loose from their hosts when we move into what was a previously nature-dominated environment. Now, we've known about coronaviruses since the 1960s. There are over 500 of them. And they're in reservoir species right now, just waiting to be shaken loose. 
We've known about this particular coronavirus as early as 2015. It was found in a horseshoe bat in a cave in Yunnan, China. But we as Homo sapiens disturb diverse ecosystems and start eating animals from those previously wild places where the ones giving the virus the opportunity to transfer into the human host. It's our fault. It's humans cutting the viruses loose from their hosts. Now, humans have had a low impact existence in many of these places for generations. However, it's when we go in making huge disruptions that we start to paint a target on ourselves as human beings. So while you and I had to deal with the epidemiology, the public health, and the politics of the coronavirus, the root causes, which don't make it in the headlines, are grounded in environmental science. So how does this relate to you? Well, let's say you own a cell phone. Your cell phone has capacitors, the little electronic stuff that makes the phone work, right? Those are made of minerals such as coltan. Coltan is mined from tropical forests in the Democratic Republic of Congo, often by hand. The miners deep in the jungles, they have to eat something, right? And they eat what is referred to as bushmeat. Now, you can't go to your local HEB and find bushmeat next to the bologna. Bushmeat is a catch-all term for any meat of wild animals from the tropical forest. Bats, monkeys, snakes, cane rats, they look like giant foot-long guinea pigs, and uh, bush bucks, pangolins, and hares. In the markets where bush meat is butchered and sold, they're referred to as wet markets. They're good places for zoonotic diseases to spill over to humans. So we're all connected. If you consume, in this case electronics, you're part of the community ecology puzzle. Now, back to our original question. How fast can a coronavirus move? Well, I did some scientific calculations, and I calculated the answer to be 821.333 feet per second. Now think about that for a moment. 821 feet in one second. That's two and three quarter American football fields in one second. That's pretty fast. That's Mach 0.84. Mach 1 is the speed of sound, so that's almost the speed of sound. Or, in miles per hour, it's 560 miles per hour, the cruising speed of a Boeing 777. That's right, because one coronavirus infected person on one transcontinental flight is giving that legless, wingless coronavirus a free ride. If you would like a notification when we create a new video, then subscribe to us on YouTube. Also follow and like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.